my folks uh, two days ago, it won't be two days for you, but on April 29th, I bumped into Matthew Bornstein on uh, at Blue Stockings, you, you know, the bookstore on, uh, what's the street, Christie Allen Street. And he, he, he wished me a, a happy May Day, May 1st. And I remembered other May Days I'd spent, May 1st days. Uh, May Day has a long history. It, it goes back to the, um, to the uh, Maypole and the celebration of spring, pagan ceremonies and worker ceremonies. And in the United States, uh, an important May Day was uh, in the 1880s. It was the beginning of a drive for the eight-hour day because uh, when the Industrial Revolution came to this great country, it started in, with Slater Mill and Slater Mills in Massachusetts where young farm girls and in uh, Lowell and in uh, Lawrence would work 12 hours a day, six days a week, maybe, maybe even working on Sunday. So May Day has a long history, and I remember as a younger man, kid, the May Day parades in New York City, they ended in Union Square, and Union Square was not named after trade unions, uh, unfortunately. It was where two street, two avenues came together. And um, there were tens and tens of thousands of uh, unions. Union members marching in this parade. Some of them were anarchists, c communists, some of them were just workers. They were every uh, nationality in the working class. And there were bands and banners. It was wonderful. <coughs> Those days are gone, uh, seemingly, because uh, the working class in America is, is, uh, uh, fled to uh, Asia and fled uh, or disappeared and uh, uh, the technological revolutions of uh, workers are being reduced to a uh, electronic chip now and Marx never predicted that so uh, uh, but there are still the oppressed luckily there are still the oppressed because whoever does work or does menial work or uh, factories are disappearing in many places. Uh, they're oppressed. They're oppressed by the upper classes, the rich classes, the political classes, the governmental classes or class. The, the, the rulers oppress the people who are ruled. And even in the so-called democracy, that's a lie. This has become a deathocracy. It's not bringing uh, democracy to um, Iraq, for instance. It's bringing Deathocracy. It used to be trying to bring democracy, spelled D-E-M-O-C-K-R-A-C-Y, but now it's just, you know, and uh, soldiers are just workers with guns, and what they manufacture is death. So um, I feel sorry for uh, anyone who can't afford to go to college, so they go to hell instead. Uh, they join the army, forced to join the army. And there's no draft, God forbid, because if there was a draft, there is a middle class in America, sort of, still being destroyed slowly. But uh, if there was a draft, the war would end much sooner. But uh, they can't do that, so they're the people who rule, uh, rule over us. So. Uh, they're in a deep quandary. They don't know what to do. So they're saying, let's just kill for another few months and then maybe we can retreat honorably. Uh, I remember now the Vietnam War, and it came out later that uh, McNamara had uh, told Johnson, and they knew years before the war ended that they couldn't possibly win there. I don't know what they were going to try to win anyway. But in order to save face, they, uh, oh, the light came on. Well, that, that, that's in honor of this statement. In order to save face, was it to save the rest? No. 
the people in uh, the ports, uh, grunts, the soldiers in Vietnam had to lose their ass. So tens of thousands, well, maybe 20,000 died after when they realized, uh, Americans, uh, Vietnamese, who's counting? Uh, two million Vietnamese, I think, died in that war. So uh, they had to keep the war going to, uh, to uh, save their face. Go figure. So, um, to get back to today's program, um, I became a radical when I was 13. I was I'm a depression child, and you had to be, and I went to a, a kind of el elite um, high school that had a uh, young, what do they call themselves? Uh, uh, National Student Union? No. American, I forget the name, but it was a comic front and I joined it. And I became radicalized when I was 13. So uh, this is a song that sort of uh, re uh, recovers or tries to recover uh, what it was to be a radical and um, in this desperate uh, 20, in the desperate 20th century. And I, I first heard the tune for this, it's the Moscow Nights. I first heard the tune to this from uh, Lee Crabtree, a, a, a piano player and uh, great musician in the Fugs while we were tr doing a cross-country tour where the uh, Volkswagen broke down every 200 miles. And we were in, uh, he put it, he, he tuned it on the radio, car radio, and we got Moscow Nights. This was in California. We were headed for the summer of love. We got there. We got love, too, in California. And uh, we found love and made love. Ooh. And uh, he, he was playing it, and suddenly uh, the car stopped. And, I, and there had been report of a blackout in the East, one of the first great blackouts. And I thought, uh-oh. Uh, Amiri, no, what do we call him now? Leroy, uh-oh, his folks are doing it again. We sort of thought the blackout was uh, intentional, it wasn't. And it, was, it wasn't a blackout, we just, in Chicago, because the car, in, in California, the car stopped running. Somehow it linked to me with the blackout, I don't know why. Maybe I thought cars ran by electricity then, but they didn't, but that it would have been battery. Anyway, um, that's all pretty confusing. So, uh, but I still remember that tune. And then we found out with no blackout, you know, we had to go get gas just before <laughs> before we reached San Francisco. So uh, <clears throat> uh, then I became interested in that in that beautiful melody, and I thought it was a traditional melody, supposedly not, but who knows? And I met a Russian. Uh, immigrant uh, professor of communications, I think, at uh, one of the California uh, uh, institutions. You know, uh, wait a while, prison is an institution. Too. Oh, well, anyway, California, and he taught communication. I asked him about this song, and I said I was disappointed because I think the song was written in the late 20s or early 30s under Stalin. And I said I was disappointed when I found out, I thought the, the new words in English were, a, uh, were not a translation and that the original song must have had some uh, deep political content. He said no, that the, it was a love song about un, uh, unrequited love, about love gone by. And uh, I said, oh, that's terrible. I thought, I thought it was a political song and he said, this was at Otano Media in Brooklyn, uh, the Anarchist Press. And he said to me, well, you know, uh, under Stalin, a love song was a radical song. Uh, in other words, uh, people's private life was just as important or more important than what uh, the current dictator or the current Democrat, the current or what the uh, 
what is he called? The preceder? No, the decider decides, you know. So your personal life is more is just or more important than your so-called political life. American political life is a farce, but that's a, that's for another program. So uh, I wrote this song, and I'm going to sing it now. Uh, you can can you focus in on the words so people can also see it? Oh, the focus in on the uh, illustration. It's a marvelous illustration. It says the 1st of May, 1920, long live the festival of workers of all countries. You see, communism and, or, and uh, anti, uh, the absence of capitalism is supposed to eliminate competition between countries, uh, nation states, and they, so that the workers of uh, all countries don't kill each other. And the reason they wear uniforms, by the way, is that you should know who to shoot, who to kill, because otherwise you might think the person you saw was, um, shouldn't be killed. You know, you wouldn't, you, you gotta know who to kill. And with that, the light goes out. <laughs> Just like the light goes out when someone gets killed. Um, I'm rambling on now, but, uh, I'm reminded of the wonderful, I have to tell this story too, uh, Good Soldier Schweik. It was made into a movie with a series of um, short vignettes, uh, Fui Eton, if I'm pronouncing the uh, French correct, by a Czech, Vladislav, uh, no, what was the Czech's name? Good Soldier. Uh, I forget his name now. It will come back to me. And he, um, he was drafted into the um, uh, Austro-Hungarian Empire and World uh, Army in World War I. And they, he went, they went, they fought in uh, Eastern Europe and Poland and Galicia mostly. And he wrote, um, he had many, uh, many uh, wonderful adventures, but the, the best one, uh, he, he uh, when Franz Ferdinand was shot, someone came into the shop, into a bar in the, uh, in the book, A Good Soldier Strike, and uh, he said, have you heard Franz Ferdinand has been shot? And, or, uh, Ferdinand has been shot. And uh, Schweik says, was that the Ferdinand who owned the pet store across the bridge, or was it the, gr the greengrocer on this side of the bridge? And um, there's a scene where uh, he goes to enlist in the Austro-Hungarian Empire to join the fight, only his leg is broken. So he goes in a wheelchair and he's got crutches and he goes into the draft office and he shouts, on to Belgrade, on to Belgrade. And he gets an immediate 4F as, a, as an insane person. So then the, uh, uh, the the concluding chapter is even uh, uh, more hilarious. Uh, there's a lull in the fighting somewhere on the Eastern Front, and um, he, um, they go in bathing, the soldiers, and they leave their uniforms on the side, and suddenly there's a shot fired, and everyone runs to get their uh, clothing, the uniforms, and Schweik puts on a uniform of the Russian army, and then he gets captured by his own troops, and he spent the rest of the war in a prison camp uh, near Vienna. Very good. All right, so how much more time do we have? 14 minutes. We have 14 minutes left? All right, this is, instead of being mostly a musical uh, uh, session, this has been uh, a lot of talk. Anyway, this is called, <coughs> oh yeah, about the uh, illustration. Uh, Beautiful picture of a, 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 woman, a young woman uh, uh, and green leaves all around. And most Bolshevik and later C, CP uh, banners, uh, posters, were terrible. They were, this is the only one I remember that didn't have a picture of a fat, ugly capitalist and or uh, honest, strong Russian 
communist peasants or, or workers with guns on their shoulders, rifles on their shoulders. So I'm a pacifist, so that didn't object me, make me feel good. So this is the only uh, communist poster, Soviet poster that I like. Oh, right. <clears throat> when I was a young man a long time ago, through blue Moscow nights deep in snow, we would talk and scheme, and then we'd walk and dream our utopian hearts so all ago. Youthful dreams turn nightmare, but yet, but yet, all our love of freedom's beauty we will ne'er forget under stars of evil and dreadful hate our wondrous children still now defy their fate through the years of hope and fears we have all seen Many comrades disappear, how sad we have been. Different czars shall come, but different czars will go. And darling, I still love you so. When I was a young man, a long time ago, through bro Moscow nights in deep snow, I would talk and scheme, and then we'd walk and dream. I told you, so ago. Let's turn it off for a while. Okay, here we go again. Youthful dreams turn nightmares, but yet, but yet, all our love of beauty's freedom we shall ne'er forget. Neat sat the lights of evil and dreadful hate. Our wondrous children now still defy their fate. Through the years of hope and fears we all have seen. Oh, comrades, disappear, of sad have we been. Different czars will come, but different czars shall go. And my darling, I still love you so. Okay, that was the job. And um, now back to the real world. Um, the world, oh, let's see, yeah, there's another song for all you guys and gals. Uh, the World Health Organization estimates that about 10 million people worldwide will die of tobacco-related diseases next year. And it says that 500, all right, let's, let's just think about that. Uh, this uh, Marlboro, see Marlboro? It's the world's leading cigarette. It's uh, uh, Philip Morris Company. And they bought, they amalgamated some decades ago even with craft food. So you should get them mixed up. For instance, if they're a craft food corporation, how could they be killing people? Well, maybe with rotten cheese. No. So uh, they recently, uh, si since there's been a huge anti-smoking uh, tobacco movement, they recently change their name. Well, they, they advertise on TV. They stopped doing it uh, for a while. They're telling you how to, these, these ads, I can't believe the hypocrisy of them. 
They're telling you how to stop your children from smoking, from beginning smoking. Because, you know, their customers die every day. In, in America, one out of, uh, four, one out of four, four deaths are tobacco-related every year. They don't, you don't know that. They don't tell you that. Uh, two million deaths, four, uh, 400,000, over 400,000 tobacco-related diseases. Can you beat it? Can you, can you beat that? Uh, lung cancer, um, uh, emphysema, heart failure, all kinds of cancers and other organs of the body, they keep discovering it. I remember now George Gershwin, you used to see him with a cigar, and a friend of mine also. They died of brain cancer. Brain cancer, my ass, so to speak. The lung cancer went to their brain and then they died. That's what happened to another friend of mine. He couldn't talk at the end, you know. And, and the, should his uh, death be called brain cancer or lung cancer? Or how about tobacco cancer? Some states now have uh, make it uh, uh, compulsory to put down tobacco as a cause of death. So, um, and then all, some of you may, may remember having seen a few years ago the at least half a dozen heads of tobacco companies before a uh, congressional committee. And the que they were each asked, do you believe that tobacco causes lung cancer? They all denied it. They didn't know. They said they didn't really know, except that the, the uh, through the through the uh, decades in the in the in the uh, in the lawsuits filed by the survivors of uh, people killed by tobacco, uh, uh, in a few instances, it, 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 each company gets proven. It gets proven that uh, it get it gets proved that they did know. So they lie. They lied to Congress. I guess uh, I don't believe in uh, prisons, but that's a punishable effect. Uh, a punishable crime. Um, no one should go to prison. It doesn't do any good. Um, so, uh, Philip Morris changed its, its name to Altria, A-L-T-R-I-A. Meanwhile, when they're telling, uh, they're, te they're teaching you in America, supposedly, how to stop your kids from starting smoking, they're doing their damn best to start to start uh, to increase their sales all over China, the next booming market. A billion, what is it? Two billion? How many people in China? Too many to count. Great market. They're trying to do this. So they changed their name to Altria, A L T R I A. But I spell it Altria. I'll try and fool you. I'll try and fool you. Meanwhile, they donate money to. Uh, to the Brooklyn uh, Academy of Music, to different art galleries that are stupid enough to take their, the, the money of these murderers. All right. So the World Health Organization, it's only 10 million a year, and it says the World Health Organization that 500 million people now alive, that's the correct figure, 500 million, will eventually die of that same ignored affliction, tobacco addiction. And one out of one out of four deaths in tobacco uh, in in, in uh, U.S. is now smoke on, smoke on, deluded, addicted, suicidal, stupid idiots. I can say that because I used to smoke. I smoked. I was a smoker. And like Mark Twain said, uh, it's very easy to stop smoking. I've done it a dozen times. The CEOs CEOs of tobacco companies are all mass murderers. Compared to them, Saddam, Osama, Bill Clinton, uh, Bush, Ariel, and Yasa, Putin, and Zhang, they're all pitifully amateurs. So we, I wrote this little melody. You could sing it along with me, all you smokers, too. What we need to do is instead of spending a billion, trillion dollars on uh, munitions to kill people, we should look for better ways to end addiction. So come on, everybody. Smoke, smoke, smoke your life, smoke your life away. Wearily, drearily, drearily, wearily. Thirty thousand will die today. So, um,
How much time do we have? Three, Three minutes. minutes. Yeah. Well, when you tune in next uh, to the next program, we're going to do a lot of music. We're going to uh, we're going to start next week, no, two weeks from now, with uh, Ghost Chickens in the Sky. Maybe I'll do a, uh, you remember that great uh, song, um, Ghost Riders in the Sky, which was the melody of Johnny uh, Comes Marching. It was written by, in 1949. So this is a vegetarian song, and I'll do the first verse. A chicken farmer went out one dark and dreary day. He rested by the coop as he went along his way. When all at once a rotten egg hit him in the eye. It was the sight he dreaded. Ghost chickens in the sky. Quack, 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 quack! Quack, 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 quack! Go! Chickens in the sky. The rest of the song will be discontinued next week. This is a Girl Scout song, and nobody knows who wrote this, but uh, it's a very good. Uh, it's as good as the song, no, the cartoon which says uh, the cockroaches, and they have uh, motels for humans. They're suggesting that there be motels for humans where, uh, no, that isn't nice, actually, where uh, humans uh, walk in but don't walk out. So uh, we'll see you all, or well, you'll hear us all. We got a bunch of songs and all these wonderful, wonderful stories that go with them. And, and you know, you can write songs too. Just use any, any old melody and make up your own words. It's a lot of fun. So you be a, a ghost writer. Be a ghost writer in your bedroom. No, in your living room. And then you can now you can go on YouTube too. Okay then. Do we have any more time? Should we yeah, say we're goodbye? Just about there. Say goodbye. A couple more goodbye. seconds. Goodbye. Right. I hear you and see you. See you around.